All right, so there's some pretty cool developments today. This was announced by LMSYS. These are the people behind the chatbot arena. That's where we take all these large language models and we pit them against each other to see which one survives because there can be only one. But there's a twist, there's a new approach. And that new approach is Route LLM, an open source framework for cost-effective LLM routing. There's a whole paper that dives deep into what this thing is and why it's good, but even cooler, Here's the code, it's open source. You can install it and play with it on your local machine. The reason this is a big deal is because as we build out more complex frameworks for these AI systems, for AI agents, one very simple way to improve performance is just to scale up how many different LM systems you use, how many agents you use, having one be the output, having one be the judge, for example, and then maybe you adding some sort of an agent that kind of reflects on the output of the other one in order to improve it. All those things tend to work really well for improving the overall quality of the output, whether that's text or code. We've covered things like Autogen and Chat Dev on this channel, where basically you can take GPT 3.5 Turbo, create multiple agents, all of whom kind of work together. There's supervisors, there's coders and designers and bug testers. So I think there's something like a dozen of them kind of like all working on their own individual roles. And the code that it spits out is really good, closer to something that GPT-4 would produce. So the point that the architecture of how we string these models together can play a big role in how effective they are and how good they are, what they're able to accomplish. I was able to produce games for something like five cents per game using the GPT-3.5 model in chat dev. The same thing using GPT-4 would have cost much, much more. We've seen GPT-4 simulate a whole town of people, them going about their lives. That project, I think, cost thousands of dollars in GPT-4 credits to run. But not every task needs the best top-of-the-line model to produce great results. And this is where something like Route LLM comes in. Right, so they begin, LLMs have demonstrated remarkable capabilities across a whole bunch of tasks, but there exists wide variations in their costs and capabilities, obviously, right? Something like Claude3 Opus or GPT-4.0, they're high on the performance scale, but guess what? They're also high on the cost scale. And so currently, we kind of have a trade-off. Do we use the best, the brightest, the most expensive, or do we go for something cheaper, something faster, something that's I mean, not quite as capable? And that's the trade-off that, that we meet. But what if there was a better way? This leads to a dilemma when deploying LLMs in the real world, right? Again, if you're building out something to run your business, to, to help you do web research, whatever you're doing with these models, just routing all the queries to the largest, most capable model leads to the highest quality responses, sure, but can be very, very expensive. Again, some of these projects can blow through thousands of dollars because everything just relies on, let's say, GPT-4 or something like that, right? And of course, routing queries to the smaller models can save costs, but may result in lower quality responses, right? So GPT-3.5 is cheaper, but the quality isn't as good. It will fail some of the harder tasks, whereas running something locally is more or less free. I mean, you're paying for electricity, but it's almost negligible. It's very, very inexpensive. So that's the dilemma. And LLM routing offers a solution to this. You write in your query, and before that goes to a model, there's a system like a gatekeeper that uh, first decides which LLM to route it to. You may recall Voyager, the project by NVIDIA where GPT-4 plays Minecraft and does really good at it. It learns new skills, creates code to interact with the world through an API, and goes on to explore, battle monsters, etc. This was, to me, one of the first examples of where they had a very clear and very smart distinction about between where they use GPT-4 versus GPT, for example, 3.5, the cheaper, but in some cases, less capable model. So notice here, this is the code that they're going to use for the AI agent to interact with the world. It's important that it works, and it's important that it works correctly. So not just the, the code executes like it has to run, but it also has to be the right code that does the right thing or else, you know, something bad happens. So for example, here, GPT-4 creates a function called combat zombie, right? So you're fighting a zombie. Well, it's, if it screws it up, the character dies, right? So we get the best model to take a shot at it, GPT-4. But guess what? We also need kind of a library of these skills with descriptions so that when we're looking for the correct skill, we can quickly 
read through the descriptions, find the right skill, pull it out of our library, and then use it. The description is just written in plain English, right? In natural language. It's not as important that it's 1000% correct, right? It is, it's got to be good enough, right? We're not looking for Shakespeare level of writing. We're just looking for something that we can glance at and know what this thing does. So that's this program description, right? So it describes this function, combat zombie. And it just goes, yeah, function is about equipping a stone sword to combat a zombie. Pretty simple, but guess what? It's written by GPT 3.5. And that's fine. It's not going to screw up the task. It's good enough for that task and much cheaper, much faster. So again, crucial code, we want GPT-4 to do it. Jotting down some notes about what this thing does, GPT-3.5 can do it, save us some money. And there are other examples of be this being done, but usually you have a human being that, that did that in that example. They didn't use, as far as I know, they didn't use some sort of a advanced algorithm that sorts it. They just said, you know what, let's have GPT-4 for this and 3.5 for this. LM routing is kind of this approach that, that tries to create a very effective system for doing exactly that. How do we get the best possible result that we need for that specific task at the cheapest possible cost? We don't want the world-class brain surgeon to be changing the light bulbs, right? So all queries that can be handled by weaker models should be routed to those models. With all other queries routed to stronger the, the stronger models, Minimizing cost while maintaining response quality. Note here, it's not just cost, it's also speed. Speed can play a pretty big factor, as well as potentially, you know, maybe if you don't need something like an omni model where it can do voice in and out, or you can talk to it, understands kind of the inflections of your voice, and can also output voice with like all the proper emotional nuances, right? If you're asking it to generate a picture, for example, well, maybe skip that whole thing. You don't even need a text model necessarily, maybe just go straight to to the image model, although they don't talk about that here, but I feel like as this architecture gets developed, I feel like we're going to see more of that and maybe even using things like Orca 2, where it's these smaller models that are specifically trained for just like one thing that they're super good at, right? For example, if you need something that does like sentiment analysis, for example, there's an earnings call, there's a transcript and you're like, hey, AI model, like how do they sound? Do they sound exhilarated or are they depressed? Kind of like just kind of read the room for me. How does it how does it seem like it's going? It might be possible that you can have a fairly tiny model that is exceptionally good at doing just that. So that could be called for that specific scenario. But of course, there's an obvious problem. This turns out to be a challenging problem, this ability to route them to the correct model, because the routing system has to infer, it has to guess or understand both the characteristics of the incoming query and the different models' capabilities when routing. It has to know where to send each query. And they're saying LM routing offers a solution to this. Okay, so that's the challenging problem that we're facing. The solution is LM routing. Now, if you really want to understand how it routes it, how it gets good at predicting where you need the strong model, where you could get away with using the weaker one, well, there's a lot of math involved. There's a lot of math and statistics. And in this case, they're just using binary classification. So either weak or strong. It's like, do we send it to the weaker model or the stronger model? So that's all that we're trying to figure out. Like, do we need the big guns for this one? Or can we just hand this off to an intern over here? Which, by the way, this is kind of where the whole chatbot arena comes in, right? So chatbot arena, you've seen me use it on this channel. I'm sure you've tested it out yourself. If you haven't, it's pretty interesting, pretty cool, because it gives you two different models randomly selected. You don't know which one's which right? Kind of looks like this. You're able to do vision language models. You're able to do the other language models. You give it a prompt. If you're using the vision models, you can add a image, random image or something from your desktop, whatever. And you can go multiple rounds and see which one's better. Then you vote. You only are told which models, which after you vote. So it's a blind test of which one do you prefer. And over time, they collect tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands at this point. So it looks like the total number of votes that they have for this arena is right now 1.4 million. So half a million users, one and a half million votes of people just going through and seeing which model is better, which one's worse. And interestingly enough, they also keep track of the win rate of each model against each other model, right? So you have model A, model B, this one is just an example of, I believe this is, this is probably a better image. So this is uh, model A versus model B. So model A is the winner, model B is the loser. So you can see like, for example, this one particular combination, right? You can see here and here is just when those two models meet, one wins 100% of the time. 
which is that's a bit of an anomaly that that might just mean there's not enough votes for it or whatever but the point is even when you take the best models against the weaker models the win rate isn't usually 100 percent so using this data we can zoom in and say okay where's the weaker model consistently winning or maybe tying with the much bigger more expensive model so the people behind this they're from berkeley any scale a lot of uc berkeley also canva okay but they trained four different routers using the public data from Chatbot Arena. And they've successfully demonstrated that they can significantly reduce the costs without compromising quality. And it looks like there's some pretty hefty cost reductions here. So cost reductions of over 85% on MT Bench, 45% on MMLU, and 35% on GSM 8K as compared to just using GPT-4 for everything, right? Versus outsourcing it to the cheaper, faster models where appropriate, still achieving 95% of the GPT-4 only performance, which is interesting to think about. So if you look at the, let's let's take the highest cost reduction that you found of 85%. Like, can you imagine hiring somebody to do some project for you? Let's say it costs you $100,000 just to make the numbers easy, right? That's the pro that's going to do it for $100,000. And this other company says, hey, we'll guarantee you results are 95% as good but for $15,000, right? So a cost reduction of over 85%. Now, obviously it really depends on what the project is, right? Sometimes you need it to be 100% accurate or as good as uh, possible at least. But, but again, with, you know, let's say something like this, like the description of these code snippets, right? It's okay if it's 95% as good as something that costs, what, five times more, right? Like I'll take the 95% for that cost savings. And and we'd love to see this, they're publicly releasing all code and data sets, including a new open source framework for serving and validating LLM routers. So potentially you could create your own for your own specific use cases. They can benchmark to see how much money you can save and what the quality drop off, what the trade off is. So again, so they're talking about this as they refer to it as a, a binary decision. So either one or the other, it's either a stronger, more expensive model or a weaker, cheaper model. By the way, interestingly, I think this is what Apple is releasing. This is the Apple approach to where you're going to have an on-device model that is made by Apple, and then it's going to make calls to OpenAI for all the more complex tasks, right? So if you're like, what time is it, right? That's going to be the on-device model. It's smart enough to answer you. Or if you're like, you know, pointing your phone at, at some code you wrote and you're saying, look at this code and tell me, you know, troubleshoot it. What's wrong with it? Or what does it do, right? Then it's going to connect to the server, to the cloud, and then GPT-4.0 or whatever model that is will answer your query. The OpenAI call might cost a little bit of money. The, the you know, what time is it now? That's going to be free. I'm just going to refer to it as free. It's, it's basically a negligible cost, right? There's, I mean, some fraction of one penny. So it's close to zero unless you're doing this at some massive scale. If I remember correctly, like if you have a you know, fairly beefy PC with like an NVIDIA card and you're like running it to play a game. I think the, I mean, obviously depends, but it's something like 10 cents an hour in electricity. I think, I believe that's the right number. So, so yeah, if you're running one of the bigger open source models locally on your PC, you're running 24 hours a day, you know, we're talking about a few bucks, a few bucks per day. So if you can outsource like half to your local model versus using something in the cloud that's proprietary from OpenAI or Anthropic, that half basically goes to zero, which is very exciting to think about. One thing that jumps out at me about this paper is uh, that very last sentence or two in the abstract. They're talking about they've trained this model, this gatekeeper, this router that, that is able to route queries to either the strong model or the cheaper, weaker one. And they conclude at the end, they're saying, interestingly, I, our router model also demonstrate significant transfer learning capabilities maintaining their performance even when the strong to weak models are changed at test time. This highlights the potential of these routers to provide a cost-effective yet high-performance solution for deploying LLMs. The reason that's interesting to think about is think about how rapidly more and more of the stuff that we do, the science that we do, the tests that we conduct, use AI models. Not just general AI models, but specific AI models that we cl quickly spin up and train up and then use for that specific task. So here we're making an AI model, the goal of which is to figure out which other AI model or which of the two AI models to send a query to. How do we determine how 
good the answers are? Well, we use LM as a judge. We've heard this term before, so and we're seeing it more and more in, a, in, in some of these AI research papers and also even in various papers outside of AI research. We've seen some psychology papers that use LMs as a judge to determine the quality of certain answers or responses. All right, so they're saying we explore obtaining preference labels on open-ended purpose chat domains using a LLM judge as it has demonstrated a high correlation of human judgment. So what does that mean? It means, you know, the people that go on chat arena and vote, right? You know, they have two different prompts, two different answers by these models, and they choose, I like this one better, I like this one better. Well, here they're using an LLM as a judge. Um, I'm not sure what they use. Actually, they're saying right here they're using GPT-4. But what they found was that uh, it demonstrates a high correlation of human judgment, right? So when we test a bunch of humans, which answers they prefer, this GPT-4 as a judge, it also is tends to prefer the same answers, right? So instead of trying to talk to a thousand humans out there and pay them for their time or try to get volunteers to judge these responses, we, are you, are you tracking along? We also use an AI, an LLM, to judge those responses which allows us to create a, a lot more responses or votes for the different types of responses for the data set so that we're able to train the AI model on. So to summarize, how do we decide which of the two AI models to send the query to? Well, first of all, we have an AI model that is the judge that determines which of the models produces a good result versus bad result. And then we train another AI model that then learns how to decide which AI model is going to produce the better result in those scenarios. It's exciting because on one hand, it does seem like the more AI layers we add, the better things tend to work. Like there's no sign of stopping. It just works. It works well. Might be a little bit concerning because at some point, are we going to understand any of this stuff if it's just all layers of AI brains talking and doing and deciding and judging the outputs and reflecting on the outputs and then coming up with ideas to make them better? I'll leave the link below if you want to try it out for yourself. So this is on GitHub. Installation does seem pretty straightforward. I guess what they use is GPT-4 as the strong model. And then for the weaker model, it looks like you can replace it with whatever model you want. They use any scales mixtral model here, an open source model. And then you set, it looks like, a cost threshold that controls the trade-off between cost and quality. So based on the type of quality you need, right, you might be a little bit more set more preference to the better model. So you can set it to be basically like how much do you need to save for it to be worth it. I haven't messed around with it yet, but if you want to see a tutorial about how to install it, how to use it, let me know in the comments. I am somewhat considering having a second channel where I just do this type of stuff because it's not for everybody. There are some people that don't really want to see the step-by-step -step troubleshooting of various open source software on GitHub which I totally understand. But if you're interested, let me know in the comments. I am considering doing more of that either on this channel at the end of the videos or perhaps just having a separate channel for that. What do you think? What do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this, consider subscribing. Make sure you have the notifications turned on. I feel like we're going to see some pretty big breakthroughs at kind of the intersection of science and AI sometime later this year. There are rumblings about where this whole thing is going. You don't want to miss out. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.